giving me the chance to chat with you today. Thanks to you for the interview, man. Of course. Uh, so my name is Renee with the uh, Rock Off Photography Music Magazine, and right. and for those anybody that's going to be listening, you're Martin Lo- Lopez with. Uh, am I saying this right, Sawin? Yes, okay. you are Sawin. Make sure I don't screw that up. Uh, <laughs> y'all got some exciting news coming up. You got some new things coming out. Specifically, you have a, a new album coming out, Lotus, in February. Yes. Yes, we do. It's. Uh... It's. Uh, I think uh, it's actually. <clears throat> I think we've never been dissatisfied after making an album. We always had some uh, problems with the production of the albums and sound-wise mainly. And um, this time, I think we really reached the goal. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, so how is this one differently recording-wise compared to your previous album, uh, Like Yeah, which was released <coughs> last year? Well, we had a, a, a producer from outside the band. Uh, in our prior, you know, previous records, we always used uh, our guitar players uh, produce the albums. This time, we had uh, David Castillo and Iñaki Marconi, and they they kind of uh, came in with uh, you know a lot of knowledge on how to uh, reach the vision that we had uh, behind Lotus. So. Uh, the whole recording was, you know, we we, list, we used a lot of uh, analog equipment and a lot of uh, some digital stuff, and and that's pretty much uh, the, the big difference. You know, the last album we mainly used analog stuff, and but but it didn't sound as heavy and as uh, you know it didn't breathe as much as we hoped it would, and now. And this this record really does. Yeah. So, do you, have you found a difference when y'all are recording analog as as opposed to digital and chopping stuff up? Uh, we don't chop stuff up though. No. Uh, it's no. It's it's because you need to have, uh, you know, you need to have the to feel that there's a a band playing. You know, you you need to still. You know, I think that a lot of a lot of the emotion from the musician you know the disappears when you start chopping stuff up right but uh, you know technically and some wise there's a lot of uh, good stuff coming out from uh, dig- digital equipment that that helped us out about some yeah so when you when you wrote your new album this new album Lotus uh, y'all been writing it for well over a year what did you feel was like the greatest challenge that you wanted to achieve with Lotus? I think that you know the challenge is always the same. We try to make as you know as music as good as we possibly can, and, and uh, put a lot a lot of hard work into it, and and really you know want to have an an, an album that is better than the last one. So it's, it's kind of about it's just about raising the bar every time. Uh, but we kind of obsess, obsessed with it, it and then we put you know thousands of hours <laughs> into every every little detail. And I think that the probably the, the the hardest thing to do is to feel that to just release it, to just say okay, I, I you know I cannot touch this song anymore, and just to kind of understand that the song is done and is good enough to record right yeah and and that's what i've heard from other artists too that sometimes that's that's a pitfall when you're recording like you obsess too much with that that song that it's hard to kind of let it go and realize that it's already complete we have to leave it alone it's really tough and uh, sometimes you know you destroy tracks by just getting too obsessed about it and and you start not liking music or you know certain passages that are really good but because of this this obsession where you try to to uh, you know make things better you start hating the song yeah so i i've you know i've been giving a preview and i've been listening to the new album and it, and it seems like each time that i've listened to it I find something new, something as subtle like you're you're mentioning how how y'all go in and making sure the intricacies are there. Is this something that 
uh, when the writing process that you have this thought coming in, or is it kind of something that comes naturally when you're the writing? Uh, it's, I, I, it's, I think it's just, just like a good book or a good movie. You need to have, it needs to be some kind of intricacy there and it needs to be uh, challenging and there needs to be some intelligence behind it. Otherwise it's just, you know, entertainment and I, I'm not into that that much. I want to, you know, I listen myself to music that, that makes me discover different things every time I listen to it. Uh, and uh, that that's pretty much what we do and, and lyrically also try to to have some value in what we say and, and not just deliver something for you to head back to and then uh, you know at the same time as you're cleaning your house we try to really you know really have your have you focused on our music and and uh, and kind of feel something you know? Right. Yeah, and some of the topics that you talk you, that y'all talk about is is pretty thought provoking because you, you know you also have a a new single out for Martyrs, uh, and then that in itself, you know, is kind of what you're talking about. Something to, to think about. Uh, can you tell me a, a bit about the song Martyrs and how y'all came out with the idea for this music video? Uh, well, we had. Uh, just going through different topics uh, about what we could do for the video that that idea came up and uh, when you're just talking about it we realized that it would a lot of people would get provoked and, and that uh, you know automatically we made the decision that we have to do that video because you know 2018 just having five guys dressed as women if that provokes you, you know, then we have an, an issue there that we need to address. And uh, it turned out that, as we expected, a little bit worse than that. <laughs> we had a lot of <laughs> a lot of people, you know, contacting us and telling us that, uh, you know, they love the band and they they really love our songs, but they cannot listen to us anymore because of the video and they cannot support us, and, you know, stuff like that. And people telling us that we wow. had this conspiracy theories you know with you know with us following a liberal agenda and whatever and and it's just <clears throat> it's just uh, completely uh, stupid you know we're just musicians we're just artists and uh, we just think that we need to address these issues it's just we support anyone who wants to to do whatever they want as long as they don't hurt anyone and you know and then if, if five guys dressing as women being so and uh, is a problem for you then then you don't really have any problems in your real life you know start right. living it's uh, so we're we think that we are really happy with the video and 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 I think that the message came the message came out but at the same time we are not fighting a war here. We just, we just, a band, yeah. and we express ourselves, and we think that this is a problem. So hey, yeah, it, it needs to be done. You know, it's if you're a caveman and and cannot accept that stuff or just an intolerant, then maybe you know we're not for you. <laughs> right. That's pretty amazing that you, that it had some of those reactions. But on the it's flip, amazing, yeah. Yeah, but on the just, flip side, I'm sure that a lot of people really loved it, regardless of of how you're addressed. And I mean, y'all are artists, and you should be able to express yourselves however you wish. Of course, but, uh, and not not only as an artist, just as a person, as a right. human being. You know, yes. we this is this is supposed to be this part of the world is supposed to be the free world, right? And uh, but. Yeah, yeah, it's. Uh, I don't know. I just uh, honestly, I don't understand it. That pisses me off a little bit. Right. Uh, that I, I cannot understand how somebody can be provoked by that. Yeah. You know, we have. We. I mean, we have war. We have hunger. We have. You know, people dying of Ebola and malaria and whatever. But you choose to be provoked about that. Right. It's. it's it, you know. It's. It's. Yeah. Yeah. It's. It's amazing. 
Yeah, it's very silly <laughs> to be upset about something so simple as this, which should be yeah. natural for anybody, like you said, to be able to express however they, how they want. It's, re it's really weird because, uh, you know, when it comes to, to violence, violence doesn't provoke anymore, you know. You can watch the UFC, two guys almost kill each other. You can, I don't know, watch a... a, a a death metal video where they, you know, kill a baby or whatever, and you're okay with that. But yeah. when a grown-up chooses to dress as a woman, you freak out. Right. Uh, it's just I don't get it anymore. <laughs> right. Yeah, it doesn't make any really any real sense. No, it doesn't. Yeah. It doesn't. Yeah. So for anybody that hasn't watched the video, uh, you know, you already mentioned that y'all dress up as as you know you have the female clothing. Uh, was there, particularly for this video, was it difficult to find uh, clothing that would fit y'all? <laughs> it's not actually us. Uh, that's another thing. It's not actually us in the video. Okay. It's, 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 of... actual, it's actual drag queens. Oh, yeah. Prof professional ones. Uh, and, uh, and they are playing the part that they are the band. Yeah, we we I think we appear in the in the video for just a few seconds in the middle part. Yeah, the, and uh, that's where it's like kind of transposed. Your your image is, is transposed yeah. over the the drags. Yeah, that's what made it kind of confusing. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so you didn't have to worry about trying to find clothes that would fit you for it. <laughs> uh, no, but I'd be alright with it. But I, I just don't feel that. Uh, I don't know. I I don't feel that. Uh, that ourselves as a band, it's, if you watch us live playing your instruments and doing doing our thing, that's 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 where we have something to offer. But just standing on a video and, and just kind of uh, uh, doing karaoke to our own songs, it doesn't feel comfortable for us. Right. So we try not to appear. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's very interesting. Uh, another thing too that you know you kind of mentioned about you know kind of going to playing live. One of the things that I found very interesting, you know, reading up, you know, is that you y'all don't use any backtracks when you play live. No, no, never. That's amazing. No backtracks or click tracks or anything. Yeah. No, it's, it's supposed to be live, right? I mean. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, well, that's what we do, and and I think that 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 is that that is a, a, another problem that we have today with bands and with the digital uh, era. That music is about feelings, about heart, heart, and and sharing with your audience your music, expressing yourself. Right. And as as fast, you know, as when you start following a machine and start playing to a click track that just to be on time and all that, you're kill you kill the magic. For yeah. me, you kill. For me, I, I I'm not into that. I I will never surrender <laughs> to that. Yeah. I wanna. I want to have music as it is supposed to be. You know? Yeah, five guys who wrote these songs playing their playing those those songs live for you, you know, to share. Right. Well, <laughs> as a fan, I appreciate that because to me, it. I, I mean, I notice a difference to where when somebody's playing to a back, you know, backtrack, and then as opposed to another band won't do it. And you, you're right. There is a big difference on on the feel and the emotion of the music. <clears throat> That is because you're you're not the same, you know. You you have to express whatever you're feeling that night, you know, on that certain song. Uh, you have to express yourself. You want to play slower. You want to play f faster, and the, and there's no room for expression when you're following a click track. Right. You know, you're just doing an act. You're acting. You're you're uh, kind of selling a product in a product instead of uh being an artist a, you know a musician that, that that is there to share something and i and i and i i don't want to be you know pissing on bands that do it because i don't know i don't know what they feel right but but i want to enjoy i want to enjoy every time every second of being live and, and i don't it's not about enjoying that people look up to me because I'm on that stage. I want to enjoy the actual feeling of doing this music and hopefully connecting to someone in the audience that is feeling the same. That's that's the magic of it. Right. That's what that's why why I do it. Yeah. You and and 
kind of leading into it also you know the the playing live part and of course not using any backtracking about you know kind of like a rough estimate how long does it usually take for y'all to kind of get ready with the song pre rehearsing it to feel it's like okay we have this you know when we play it we know we're going to play it the way it's supposed to sound it depends on the song and the way we try to choose songs is just by playing all the songs at you know at a rehearsal place and just going through how we feel about them you know some songs are are better in the studio some songs are better live you have to be comfortable it needs to be it needs to be a pleasure to go on stage you know right uh, they, they you know they don't pay us enough to go up there and suffer you know? <laughs> it's <laughs> it needs to be i love music and i want to love to i want to love to be on tour and i want to love to to make those shows and to make that happen to keep that alive you have to go through everything you have and, and do what you're comfortable with and and uh, and and people will love it too right it just turns out that way yeah so another thing you know that uh, y'all have some tours coming up but not till the new year is that correct we have uh, a tour coming up in March uh, and another one in September. Uh, European tours, both of them. Yeah. And uh, I think that's that's what we have. We try not to book too much in advance because, as, as I told you, this is we want to uh, to love every minute of it. And, and as soon as you start piling shows and start. Uh, making more that you actually enjoy uh, it loses the magic and there's no point in doing it so we just made we just booked those two tours that we're really looking forward to and after that we'll see what happens yeah and that's very interesting to go about it that way you know to where you want to ensure that you're you love the part when you're playing live as opposed to there's there's the other mentality of bands when it's like well we need to tour <coughs> as much as possible to get as many places as possible yeah, and I, I understand that because I kind of had that mentality when I was younger. Uh, then you have the you know the cliche that you somewhere you you kind of realize that life is short, and if you're not loving what you do, fuck, there's no point in doing it. Uh, somehow, uh, uh, I meet many many bands on the road and. Many of them tell me the same. Oh, we've been touring so much. I'm so tired of this. I want to go home. Yeah. And, uh, you know, that's really, really wrong. You know, that's really, really wrong because you need to, you need to, you need to be careful with this. This is a great thing. And, and uh, I, it's, it's magical to be able to be on stage with people paying tickets to go and see you and, uh, you, you know, to share your music with someone. It's really, it's really something special. And uh, if you hate it, what do you have? What else do you have? What is better? I mean, why, if you hate that, what are you planning to do? Right. Because it's just going to get bigger and more shows, you know? Right. So you have to kind of just stop and take it easy. Yeah. That's very, that's a, a good thing to, to mention for, you know, anybody that, or younger bands that will be listening to this is, is you know, take your time. You don't have to necessarily rush and kind of pretty much kill yourselves touring nonstop. No, exactly. You gotta. You have to enjoy it. Yeah. But it's different when you're younger. It's different when you're younger because when you're younger, you have your hunger. You know, you're, you, this hunger, and you want to be famous, and you want to be the biggest band in the world, and. S and you know that's valid too yeah. but when you're older you kind of realize there's 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 not really a difference between playing for 100 people or 800 people besides the financial part right and if you're if you're okay with with uh, having the priority of being happy instead of being rich then you start making the wise decisions just to you know to live your life or at least that's that's what i think and one of them is to be
be careful what you do, to make wise choices, and to put happiness and love for for your music first, before anything else, before fame, before money, and and all that. Because all that is just <laughs> it doesn't really matter, you know. Right. That that'll fade away, and I think fans kind of when you know listening to music can pick up and and know when a, a musician or a band is able to put you know music that that has meaning as opposed to music that's just oh here's some songs and just have at it you know you you kind of develop the fans that will follow you you know indefinitely yeah of course i think that the, that that's it's not about writing hits because you know uh, people who who are looking for hits they will listen to you today and forget about you tomorrow but right. people who's really into music they get attached to it emotionally and will follow you, you know? uh, it, it's 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 harder because there's a lot more work to write the songs and to make yourself uh, noticed and so and so on but 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 it's really worth it. Yeah. Excellent. So we're coming to a close. Uh, for anybody that doesn't know where to find Soen, where can they find you online? And, and you know, what else to expect for this coming 2019? Um, well, they can find us pretty much everywhere on the internet. If you just, just write Soen somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> and... Uh, and uh, 2019, we have, as I said, we have these tours coming, and, and uh, that's it, you know, I'm just kind of, we're just kind of relaxing now and listening to to the album ourselves, and uh, just feeling that we have done a, a very good job, and it seems like people agree on that, or audience. Yes. So, all good. <laughs> uh, uh, excellent. Well, Martin, thank you again for taking the time. It was a pleasure talking with you. Uh, and this new album, for sure, like you said, it's 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 a great album. Whether if you're, you know, a longtime fan or a new fan, it, there's a lot in this album, and it's very dense to where people can listen to it and and get something out of it, it out of each listen. Thank you for that, and uh, thanks for the interview. And uh, it was a really good chat. All right, thank you. I appreciate it. You have a good day. You too. Take care. Thank you. Bye-bye.